Hello. I thought um, I would create this video, which sort of is a revision of a previous video I did maybe 18 months ago concerning the Phoenix years and what is revealed from that just by using a calculator. So let me just explain how this works. So we take the Phoenix year of 1902. So you add the 1 and the 9 and the 2, which gives you 12, which is 1 and 2, which reduces to 3. So 1902 has the sum of the number 3. Its equivalent in the Annus Mundi is 5796, which if you add the 5, 7, the 9 and the 6 together gives you 27, so you add the 2 and the 7 which gives you a 9. So let's go back to the start of the Anno Domini. So the first Phoenix event year is 108 Anno Domini. So 1 and 8 makes 9. Its equivalent in the Annus Mundi is 4000 at the year 4002, which gives a sum of 6. So Annus, the Anno Domini, the next Phoenix year is 246 AD, which adds up to 12, which gives you the sum of 3. That is followed by 334 AD, which gives the sum of 15, which reduces to the number 6. And what you'll find is you have this pattern. So the year 108 comes out as 9, the year 246 comes out as 3, the year 334 comes out as 6. All you do Take the year 1902, you subtract 138 to get the, the previous Phoenix year. And what you'll find, starting with this 108 AD, you'll get a sequence of 9, 3, 6, 9, 3, 6, 9, and so on. So when we look at the next Phoenix year of 2040, that is going to give you a 6. Theoretically, the next Phoenix year would be 2178, which, if you add those numbers together, gives you 1 and 8, 18, which gives the sum of 9. So then looking at the Annus Mundi, you've got that year 108 AD, it's 4002 Annus Mundi, which gives you a 6. The next one, adding 138 years, would give you 4140 Annus Mundi, which adds up to 9. And then 4278, which adds up to 21, which reduces to 3. So you get the same pattern, but it starts uh, slightly different. So the 108 A Anno Domini, which is the sum of 9, it's equivalent in the Annus Mundi is 4002 which gives you a 6 but the pattern is the same but it is in a reversed sorry no it's the same sequence but they're slightly adrift so starting with the Anno Domini, Anno Domini you've got 9 then the next Phoenix year is 3 then 6 then 9 when you come to the Annus Mundi it starts with 6, then becomes 9, then becomes 3, then becomes 6, then becomes 9, and so on. So you've got this 3, 6, 9 sequence. This is something often referred to many times about Nikola Tesla saying to understand the secrets of the universe is to understand 3, 6, and 9. However... This changes when we go into the BC calendar. And we I've taken this right back 
to 3895 BC and started from there. Of course, when you're working in the BC calendar, it is working in reverse, so you have to add 138 years. But what you'll get, if you add 3895, it comes to 25. So you add the 2 and the, the 5, which gives you 7. The next year, Phoenix year, if we, this is a, this is theoretical at this stage, but I just carried the numbers back of Phoenix years to 3895 BC. So 3757, you add those numbers together, it comes to 22, which gives you the sum of 4. That is followed by 3619 BC, which gives you 19, which reduces down to 1, because you don't count zeros. 1, 9 obviously makes 10, so you're left with 1. So what, <coughs> excuse me, what you've got as a sequence with the BC calendar, it starts 7, then the next Phoenix year is 4, the next Phoenix year is 1, then it keeps repeating 741, 741, 741, until you get to 31 BC, which has the sum of 4. Now when you turn to the Annus Mundi, so we start with year 1 of the Annus Mundi, which is 3895 BC, that obviously is number 1. You add 138 for the next Phoenix year, it, it, the th theoretical uh, numbering at this stage, because this is before the first Phoenix event. So the next Annus Mundi year would be 139, which gives you, if you add those numbers together, 13. So you that reduces to 4. So you get this same sequence, but it's the opposite way round. The years that come to the sum of 4 in the BC calendar and the Annus Mundi both come out as a sum of 4. But either side of those, so we take 3619 BC, that comes to the, reduces to the sum of 1. But its equivalent in the Annus Mundi is 277 which added together comes to 16, which becomes 7. So it does a, an, an, an alternating around where you've got the number 4, the Phoenix year prior to that, where it is 1 in the BC calendar, becomes a 7 in the Annus Mundi. So you've got this 147, 147 sequence in the Annus Mundi. But of course, when we change to the Anno Domini, this is the strange thing. That both the Annus Mundi and the BC AD calendar both change to that 369 sequence. But they don't tally in the same way so 108 AD gives you the number 9. Its equivalent in the Annus Mundi gives you 4002, which gives you a 6. So those numbers, although they follow the 369 pattern, don't have the same uh, matching as with the sum of 4 with the BC calendar to the Annus Mundi. I hope that sort of makes sense. I'm going to attempt to do a PDF file, but I will put the basis of this into the um, description under this video. So when we turn to Nikola Tesla talking about the 369, that only applies to when we are in the Anno Domini uh, calendar and its equivalent years in the Annus Mundi. But when we turn to the BC calendar, that comes out with that sequence of 741, which its equivalent in the Annus Mundi years comes out as 147. Now there's an interesting phenomenon here. Now if you put the, the question into a Google search, was there a year zero? So 
going from 1 BC to from from BC to AD it says there is no year, year zero <coughs> but for things to tally you have to include that year zero but it would throw the phoenix cycle of 138 years out by one additional year that may be i'm only speculating here it may be to do with this uh change over to a 365 and a quarter day solar year from a 360 day uh year the change coming about in the year 713 bc or 3182 on the Annus Mundi. So I find that's a very interesting phenomenon. I took it a step further, looking at the Nemesis X, which has a 792 year uh, cycle. So the first appearance of the Nemesis X in the BC calendar is the year 2707, which comes, if you add those numbers up, it comes to 16, which becomes a 7. Now, the Nemesis X has a 60-year period when it is in the Earth's orbit, as it were. So its exit year is 2647 BC which comes to 19 which ends in a 1 and you'll find with this Nemesis X it does this sequence so if we take the appearance years of the Nemesis X 2707 1913 1003 BC they all come to the sum of 7 the exit date of the Nemesis X, 2647, 1855, and 943 BC. Uh, sorry, I've got that slightly wrong there. 2647 adds up to 19, so that reduces to 1. 1855 BC adds up to 19, that also becomes 1. The next one, 943 BC, actually comes out as the sum of 7. Then when we turn to the next Nemesis X, 211 BC, that adds up to a sum of 4. Its exit equivalent, I have got that slightly wrong as well, I need to do a recalculation. But I shall correct this before I put the data in the description. Now interestingly, the Nemesis X, its arrival in 462 Anno Domini gives you the sum of 3. Its exit date of 522 AD gives you the sum of 9. And this repeats in 1254 AD gives you the sum of 3. And the exit date is 1314 AD, which also gives you a 9. And then we turn to the year 2046, the next appearance of this Nemesis X. That gives you the sum of 3. You add the 2 and the 4 and the 6, which gives you 12, which reduces to 3. The exit of the Nemesis X in 2106 also gives you a 9. Its equivalent in the Annus Mundi is 5940, which also gives you a 9. I haven't, <coughs> excuse me, I haven't done the calculation in the Annus Mundi for the Nemesis X, but uh, I'd invite you to look at all the other calendrical systems, because you can't expect Jason of Achaic to do all of this. It's very simple. You just use a calculator, like he, like he has said. You add or subtract 138, depending on whether you're working on the BC or the AD calendar. But of course, that changeover from the BC to the AD actually gives you 139 for this to conform to the Chronicon. 
make of this what you will. I'm just the messenger, as it were, of reporting what I have found in this. So I hope that brings some sort of clarity by taking these years and finding, reducing it to, to its sum of those, by adding those numbers together. And you'll see that you get these patterns. But make of it what you will. But it is interesting how both the BC and AD calendar and the Annus Mundi both change from a, a 741 or a 147 and both change to a 369 when we come into the Anno Domini. Confused yet? <laughs> it probably does sound very confusing. Maybe it is worth hearing this video a couple of times, but I will put the calculations in the description and hopefully I can create a PDF file. Bear in mind I only have a mobile cell phone to actually work with to do this. I don't have access to a computer. But I invite you to take this further and maybe look at the, um, the Mayan uh, back to the 13 Bactons with the Annus Mundi I have tried to do this with the BC and AD calendar and I could not find any discernible pattern with that for example but maybe there is with the Annus Mundi as to the other calendrical systems I have yet to do the calculations but again I invite you to do that for yourselves because the more of us that can bring pieces to the table, the, the better. The area where I perhaps have the greatest knowledge would be looking at lives of composers, say for example Beethoven or Wagner, and you will find there are patterns within that, taking their entire lifespan and then taking their creative period with the symphony, and that also reveals patterns and isometric markers and things with that. I have covered that in a previous video. Unfortunately, I can't give you the link to the video that it was on because it is so far back and I, I'd have to go through each of the videos to actually find it. Despite all my uh, numbering of videos and things and putting them into playlists, it still doesn't actually help when it comes to this. So that is the sort of summary and answers a question that came up on a Facebook group that was uh, then also put across into a, a messenger group uh, connected with Archaics. So I will be putting a link into the Facebook group relevant to, to the question and also in the messenger thread and I invite you to look at this further yourselves it is simply doing calculations of either the 138 with the Felix cycle or doing the 792 or 732 year period with a ne Nemesis X object as to the dark satellite, that is another one that may yield some interesting results with the numerical sequences, but that is something else I have not done so far. I may look at the Chronicon and actually go through that at some later date. So that is this video. Um, it superseded another video I was going to make uh, which will be the next video that I create talking about these solar flares and what I have personally experienced from this and what has transpired in conversations what many of you also have been feeling which has been not exactly pleasant, shall we say, but it, think of it like the path of the sun. When it is at its highest point, it's only going to go one direction. So if you're feeling 
like you're suffering, for example, that is actually a blessing because there is some sort of internal reset that seems to be going on. But think of it as the sun at its lowest point in winter. There's only one way it can go when it's at its lowest point. That reflects in our lives as well, where when you've hit rock bottom, the only way is to then go up. So don't uh, curse what a feels and appears to be something negative, rather celebrate it because it means that things are going to improve uh, on an individual level and most likely on a collective level as well. So we'll leave that there and I will say love to you all and if you are struggling and suffering through these, this solar flare thing this weekend, from the, uh, what was it, the Friday the 10th, and it, this is set to go on to Monday the 13th, know that it too will pass. It probably conforms to a three and a half day cycle. That is something that is reflected in scriptures, um, particularly to do with a crucifixion. But we'll come on to that more in the next video. So love to you all and I wish you all a wonderful, wonderful day.